Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. I'm Grayson, one of your hosts. I'm Cole, the other host. Grayson, today we're talking about uh, a nice little two-parter for Bad Batch Season 3, uh, Infiltration and Extraction. Yes, these were my favorite episodes so far. Yeah, they definitely... Uh, they they definitely were were not messing around with these two episodes, man. The, mm-hmm. I, I I just uh, oh it's it just keeps getting better. I'm super excited as to where this uh, this season's gonna go. What's your overall thoughts so far? Um, on the seasons or the episodes or both? Uh, well, why why not both? Why not both? I mean, the season thus far is on track to be definitely the the best, and I would say most consistent season in terms of quality. Um, mm-hmm. but in terms of the episodes themselves. It just, it struck a chord with me personally, just because it's a lot of clone content, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I and I know that like every episode is technically clone content, but the fact that this is the first appearance of Rex thus far in this season, as well as a plethora of other clones, both good and bad. Uh, just uh-huh. makes it for kind of a very nice ensemble uh, two-parter, which I get why they did this as as a two part. Like they're, I think they're being very strategic with the episodes they're releasing like one or two at a time. Um, so, uh, I was, I was very pleased with these episodes. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I think that this was my, this is my favorite part of the season at this moment. Um, it's kind of hard to say, uh, that one, that one episode was like my favorite over the other. Cause they kind of, they just feel like the same episode. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm I'm a big fan. I think season three is shaping up to be the best one because uh, they've just had uh, very good episodes consistently. And like mm-hmm. we've established before, some of them have seemed to like act in the way that filler would act, but they all push the narrative forward in a meaningful way. Yeah. And so I feel like there's never any lost time with the season. So uh, I'm very pleased with where we're at, uh, and I just can't. I I need more. I need more. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that. Next week will be one episode, and then after that will also be another single, and then we'll do it, get another double before kind of writing it out until the the end of the season, which is yeah. creeping up like unsettlingly fast. Like I, I'm like, yeah, I think we're already at episode seven was was extraction six and seven, uh, yeah. which means we're approaching the the halfway marker. Next week will be like. We'll technically be we will technically be past the halfway because there's only 15 episodes, but yeah, um, but yeah, I I'm like sad now because I'm like, oh, it's getting too real. The show is I, we're already almost halfway through the season and the show being done, you know. Yeah, the show is the show is coming to an end, and uh, as far as we know, this is the end of our animated clone content for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's definitely one of those moments where you're like, I don't, uh, how, how about we get like season four, maybe at least, <laughs> um, yeah. as, as a joke, of course, but yeah, yeah. um, I, I don't want it to end, but hopefully, uh, when, when it ends, it will be, uh, good. Yeah. I mean, at, at this point it, it's definitely going to be, but, uh, why don't we go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll break down kind of the flow of, of, I, I think we should just, I'll just go ahead and kind of do it all as, as one continuous episode, uh. Yeah, a longer beat for beat. forty minute episode, yeah. So uh, we get kind of a, a a stinger open where we're not with the batch at all. Uh, we are actually mm-hmm. on. I don't know if they ever actually say the specific planet, but um, it's either it's either Orto Plutonia. Sorry, no, that's the the moon. It's either Pantora or Raxus. It's one of the two. Um, I'd have to yeah. I'd have to double check to see. But either way, uh, we see. A, a bunch of, of clones escorting uh, Senator Singh, which I believe was a, it, mm-hmm. he is a character from uh, previous seasons. Um, and they're, they're, it's in the night, um, and Rex is there along with, uh, with Hauser and a plethora of other clones that we, we have seen. Um, and, uh, and we see that it is Singh being summoned to, uh, to meet with Ryo Chuchi, um, yep. who has kind of been this advocate for the clones since last season um yeah. which i believe uh, re- yeah i i love her i mean i i think she's like the perfect character that they've been kind of continuing this with although i worry for her fate um yeah <laughs> yeah i do too 
because uh, yeah. Palpatine's Palpatine's got her in his sights uh, ever yeah. since the stunt that she pulled. Yeah, uh, in the Senate. So. Yeah, and we we see that very clearly with both Singh and her, where uh, we get another one of these these. I guess technically not the first appearance in this season, but kind of their first major actual point in the plot. These uh, clone X assassins. Um, uh -huh. One is dispatched to uh, to take care of. I, I believe, I, from what I remember correctly, they're trying to just kill the senators. Um, they're targeting yeah. them, and uh, and so this clone X guy, he's he's sneaking all about, and they're listen. They are they're efficient. I will say, like they are. Yeah good at their jobs um they take out i believe uh, uh one or two clones and then they make they make chase um and th this little dialogue piece though before i get too far past it uh um sing and uh chuchi they're talking about how uh there's a lot all of these you know banding factions that are trying to, there's rumblings that they're trying to like you know turn against the empire but there's no leader which is kind of a mm -hmm. uh kind of like a a foreshadowing in a way to Mon Mothma because you know she's kind of the yeah. eventual leader of, of the rebellion and, and things like that um but yeah they uh th this they kind of bust this clone assassin and they end up uh capturing him um and they 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 quickly I, I believe it's Hauser that should suggest the idea that like we gotta uh we got to bring in the the batch, right? Am I am I correct about this? Cuz Omega uh, is on the list. Yeah, he's he's on he's on the data puck for for the list and also Hauser's like uh Crosshair was was there. He could give us information, you mm -hmm. know. Um and I I really like uh this kind of change in Hauser's characterization. He's very he's very dedicated ever since he lost yeah. his squad. I think that that's mm -hmm. really interesting. And also I was going to I was going to mention um it's not like he hasn't been already, but D. Bradley Baker has really been putting in the work um, with uh, with these clones because uh, the the ones that were introduced to at the beginning of this episode that are a part of like Rex's squad, uh, mm -hmm. namely two new ones named uh, Greer and Samson, both very yeah. cool clones. They sound very gruff. Yeah. Um, and I was like, if if D. Bradley Baker ever voiced uh, Sev, that's probably what he would kind of sound like. Yeah. Um, He's done a very good job this season of making all the clones sound even subtly distinct. Uh, yeah. Like there, there was one that kind of had a little bit more of a, he didn't sound exactly like Gregor where there was kind of like the, the cracking in his voice, but it, he definitely mm -hmm. had a more of like high pitch kind of nasally, but not like, not like uh tech or crosshair, but more just yeah. like, just a little bit of a higher octave, but still with that, the, the voice, um, but uh, but yeah, they they be the best practice, best voiceover practice. Yeah, dude, he's he's got it down pat. Um, and there's a reason why he's basically just every character in the show. I mean, think about later on when all of these characters are on Teth. He is literally every character, other than Omega. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he is it's, every single one. I hope he's getting uh properly compensated for oh, it. I, he's he's getting he's getting that cheddar, bro. Like we know he's, it. He's he's getting his bank. Yeah, um, um, but yeah, they so they. I believe I don't. I think they capture him and then they take him to Teth first before they decide. Uh, so they have a little enclave on Teth, which is a very nice callback to uh, to Clone Wars movie. Um, yeah, kind of full I, circle I, moment. I thought that that was so cool. I, I don't know why, but I was like, man, this is. I, I just feel like we've we've come a long way since yeah. that movie. Which Teth is a very pretty planet, man. Like I, yeah, I'm I like, just it's love got, those pink hues. Yeah, the pink and purple with like a little bit of like blue foliage and stuff. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. it's cool. But yeah, they've got them on on this kind of, uh, this dilapidated one of the, the kind of more spires. Um, and they take out the uh, the thing that where they kill themselves with. Um, yeah, so the they, he does, yeah, the electric tooth thing, which is basically just the Star Wars equivalent of cyanide. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, that's where they determine, like, uh, Crosshair would know, and that also, uh, Omega is, uh, is on that list. They do they decrypt the puck uh, right then and there, or do they wait till Echo pulls up? I think they decrypt uh, they, it they, immediately. They, they do it there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, before we get back to the batch, there's a, there, there is an in-between scene, mm -hmm. uh, where is, I, th I want to say is like one of the first times we see Scorch just kind of alone without mm -hmm. Hemlock. Uh, 
And I, I know I put down in my notes, I was like, he's vitally important and I know will will remain relevant. Um, like they just keep bringing Scorch back over yeah. and over and over again. Um, I just I, I know <laughs> I feel like I'm doing like the conspiracy theorist thing here. Where I'm yeah. pointing pointing at my board. I'm like, he's he, he's in it. He's in it. Yeah. Um, and he's, but, and he gives uh, uh, this clone shadow the direct orders to go take out this other one that's been compromised because they have other ways of tracking them uh, other than scan like that scans would find. Yeah, and this the the first thing this clone this this new clone X says is uh, why have I been activated? Mm -hmm. um, which I just think was very interesting vernacular. Uh, so yeah. I guess are they maybe put into like cryo sleep or something like that? Um, as far as I can tell, as well, this is one of the this this clone shadow compared to the other ones because i i can't remember from what i re if my memory is failing me the one that we see at the beginning of the episode i think he does speak in the very beginning and he does not have a voice modulator i don't think yeah, but I this don't... one does <laughs> yeah this uh it's really on the nose here i'm kind of i'm wondering if it's gonna be a bait and switch and you, you and I, you and I can go into our uh, theories as to who this uh, clone X. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call him Clone X three, yeah. because uh, I think this is like the third one that we've seen so far. Um, so, so X three. Uh, you, you and I can go into who X three is, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, we'll probably do that in like the theory part uh, later. Yeah, I was going to say because there's a lot, there's a lot of specific beats throughout both of these episodes where he is, he is heavily emphasized and shown yeah. specifically to like live and get through these situations. Like he kind of mm -hmm. has some, some plot armor going on a little bit and, uh, <laughs> and very like, much so. Yeah. And they're like, they're, they're making a very specific emphasis on like a, Hey, Keep an eye out on this guy, you know. This this ain't your mom and pop's clone X. This is a yeah. this is another whole, whole new kind of demon. Mm -hmm. Um, so we we will see what comes of that. Yeah. So, but all, I want to say first of all, all these clones that are on Teth, super cool. They are all so yes. unique, different paint jobs. One thing that I'm loving is Hauser. By the way, has throughout this entire both of these episodes he has become one of my new favorites like i love yeah, hauser yeah. Um, great, man. his new gear with like the tactical like pouches and stuff like in the holsters on the side i'm like dude absolutely drippy like i love that look well the uh Sa samson who is uh just a clone that i'm super excited about mm -hmm. uh i thought that i thought that his armor was blue it's actually purple he blew up though yeah, he did blow up. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was basically gonna bring that up later. Um, oh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, he, I, he's, he's really. I just thought that he was really cool because he's one of the first clones uh, with purple armor that we have yeah. seen. Yes. Uh, so I, I think he is potentially a part of the 187th, which was uh, Mace Windu's Legion. Yeah. Um, and like then they turned to brown at some point later on, but uh, it's like different like subdivisions. I think. <laughs> I think it's like yeah, just different types of the Legion, I guess, because it's big. Um, yeah. But yeah, just all these clones are just so unique and very, very cool. Um, so yeah, just love seeing them have their operations that definitely won't be dismantled in any way, shape, or form. Dude, most. Um, uh, I mean, I I know it's jumping the gun a little bit, but most of these clones in this episode, like are no more like that. All right, all right, all right, man. I'm just going to get into it then. Uh, I'm so upset that they're all dead except for Rex and Hauser. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they're, they're all done. I, one of my favorites was fireball. Fireball. Fireball is dead. Nemec's dead. Samson's dead. Uh, you, you coined this term. Uh, Elvis Cody is dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> um, sideburns. Yeah. I, I think, I think he's a part of the, uh, 200. He looks mm -hmm. like a 212. I thought it was um, Cody at first. Then I was like, that's not him. Yeah. They, they, that's not him. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, they're all gone. And I'm really hoping that maybe Rex has another base somewhere else because otherwise the clone rebellion is now once again, just, there has number. to be there has to be more surely surely they would put all their eggs in one basket because because gregor was yeah. off somewhere right and he popped yeah. up at the very end of the episode and you're like okay so what was Gre gregor was clearly up doing something you know yeah um so i don't I think do. it's all done but yeah like you know other than hauser and rex like nimic and fireball and all of them they're they're all done and they were like i remember in season two being like oh these guys are so cool i know like nimic fireball dies. 
Fireball. The, he was wrecking house in season two, man. Bo yeah, both dude. him and Nemec. Oh my god. Yeah, man. It's. I, I didn't mean to get too ahead, but yeah, that it's just it it sucks. Um, so but, anyway, um, the, the 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 batch arrives on Teth. Yes. And, they, well, uh, there's a little there's a little thing that I have beforehand. Um, is that uh, they're flying uh, in Echo's uh, kind of vessel, but uh, Omega's doing that thing where she's copying uh, Crosshair yeah. with yeah. the little toothpick, and she's she's like watching him intently as he's doing yeah. it. It's just another one of those Omega mannerisms where, like, season one she was comp copying Hunter a lot, and then mm -hmm. season two she was copying Tech a lot, and now she's copying uh, Crosshair, which I'm like, I love Omega. She's so cute. She is so uh, she she's so impressionable. Like you can tell that that she she looks up to her brothers a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's very sweet. That's just the thing that she does. Yeah, I I was talking to uh, Tony and Will earlier this week about uh, how I saw this really cool uh, artwork where she's she has different pieces of their armor, but she also like had the toothpick oh. in her mouth, and she had so she I think she was using. She was using Hunter's helmet and also had his dagger. And then she had Crosshair's mm -hmm. rifle and the toothpick. Um, and then I believe she also had uh, like Tex goggles, I think. Um, and then maybe Crosshair's like shoulder pad. And then some of the mixture of like the other armor, like Wrecker's backpack and everything. And mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, man, like that that's so wouldn't be surprised if that's how it ends up yes but yeah like her the whole like with the whole get up and then she's got batcher yeah. as kind of her like hunting dog um yeah. as like which would be really cool but but right after that when they land on teth um uh echo gives her this uh the little the energy crossbow as well yeah, uh it's a, a echo personally modified uh energy crossbow yeah, um, which is dope. Which, uh, yeah, it's very cool. And um, and and he tells he he tells Omega that that like he he has a bunch of contacts uh, around the yeah. galaxy or something. Because when she's like like how'd you get something like this? Um, yeah. So it just yeah, I just, that theory that that everybody had. They were like, oh, Boba Fett's gonna give that to her, which I never really bought in bought into that much. But like, yeah, it, I thought that it's that a cool a parallel. Um, yeah. Because it's, I think it's a, it is some sort of EE type of blaster, but it's, yeah. I think it's like it's cool that Echo gave it to her. Yeah, I think I think that's that's cute because um, I, I'm glad that we got that little moment because unfortunately, yet again, uh, Echo is like really getting sidelined. Yeah. Um, in in season three, like my my guy is just not around. Mm -hmm. Um, even in this episode, he's like, oh. Uh, I'm going to go get Gregor, you know, and like, and yeah. he goes off and, you know, comes back at the end of the second episode. It's like, oh my God, like, do we really, I, I just feel like they don't like him all that much. The, the, the show writers. It's, it's weird because he was like, he was brought into the Bad Batch. So you think you would get more showtime, but it's, it still feels like he's not that much in the batch, you know, which I, I know he's doing yeah. this thing with Rex or whatever, but at least we got that moment with him giving that to, to Omega, um, which was yeah. which is neat enough. Um, it's maybe we'll get more this season. I don't know. They're doing. I think they're bal they're balancing a lot of characters, which is a, a big issue. Um, well, I think I, I think we've definitely gotten to the point where uh, where the the batch is just with Rex now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't foresee them splitting up throughout the season anymore. And if they did, mm -hmm. it would be like for purpose of the same mission. Right. So at the very least, uh, Echo won't g go like, I'm going to go off with Rex, you know, like it just yeah. uh, well, off to nowhere. Um, well, yeah, especially because like this, you know, the reason they're coming to Teth is because they that Rex and all of them are, well, Echo is bringing them there. And then uh, they're, they they try to talk to this clone assassin and uh, Crosshair immediately knows what's going on with this. And uh, but Rex was pretty adamant. He's like, I don't want to bring them in, like leave them on their own. And they're like, we have to bring no. them in, you know, like they're important to this. Um, and so like they're, they're clones just the same, you know, they're kind of beyond that whole reg non reg thing. Like, yeah. um, and so anyway, they, they get brought in to, to interrogate that, the clone and figure out maybe they could find out Tantus's location and Crosshair immediately is like, we've got to get out of here. Like they have ways to track 
um, mm-hmm. and, and like, the, and they're like, oh, we scan him, he's clear. Uh, and Hauser throughout the whole episode is, which, I, in my opinion, I know a lot of people. I mean, I don't think people are feeling this way, but Hauser is very uh, untrust, untrustworthy. Or not, sorry, Crosshair is very untrustworthy in the eyes of Hauser. Hauser's like, no yeah. way. Like this guy, super suspicious. He like he basically took out all of my my soldiers. Uh, yeah, like he was with the Empire. Like I don't trust him. Um, which is completely valid on, on it's, Hauser's it's part. It's justified. You, you can't be mad at that guy for it. Because, like, he... I mean, if you think about it, I mean, Crosshair was, like, the key individual that led to that whole operation going haywire. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it makes perfect sense for Hauser to not be happy about that or to, to yeah. not trust him since Crosshair, you know, voluntarily decided to continue on with the Empire. Yeah, and, um, and you forget... Let's maybe what you forget as an audience, like, you these clones don't get to see what the other characters go through you know yeah. it's easy as an audience member to be like oh my gosh he's being so mean to crosshair but it's like we saw everything he goes through nobody saw what crosshair went through while he was with the empire you know yeah um but uh but yeah so we kind of get this insert now where that that same clone shadow cx3 is as you're calling him he uh yeah. gets sent off to to teth to track this one and that's his objective right is just to kill to eliminate this clone uh shadow and, uh, and so he pulls up on Teth in a really cool ship, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna bring it up if you weren't, dude, that ship is so cool. Right? And just, just as of right now, and I know that you're gonna like this name, but as of right now, just, I'm headcanoning this ship name as the Shadow Hunter, um, just oh, because I, I just, I was like, man, this is, this is great. And, and the, the way that it sounds too, um, it's, oh, it's it gives so very, very big similarities to uh the scimitar darth maul ship yes um, exactly like it's got gotta the be the same control tech. stuff I, I i think so yeah like he's i mean even from the sit the seat flipping around and stuff like where does this ship come from like where are they getting Ooh. this tech you know tech wait oh <laughs> <laughs> uh but no that there is a semblance of that that i i do think can connect but yeah he he lands in teth and then he uh he makes his way up to the spire to kind of hunt down um this uh this clone uh shadow and he is yeah. like he is like i said efficient i mean he climbs up this thing and then he's like sneaking by these clones with ease yeah like, so i'm just going to go ahead and say that like this this clone i don't know if it's due to who he was beforehand or if it's due to the conditioning or both uh this clone is is hyper lethal mm-hmm. um I I mean like it, as a as an individual operative, this guy gets stuff done. Yeah, dude. Um, so I don't, it, which kind of brings me to the point where I'm like, you know, uh, later on uh, when when we just kind of theorize as to who X three is, um, it brings into question really just who this is that is just yeah. so capable in this way. Um, but also I wanted to bring up uh, when when X three is uh, kind of moving towards the uh the base and he's doing all his things like putting uh thermal detonators on different places yeah uh this the score during that point is uh it's just really good i remember there's this specific just kind of uh note that plays over and over again Mm -hmm. um that just sounds very uh i don't know it was just a really cool theme for that yeah um yeah it's just good stuff yeah i didn't pay attention to to the score that much so i have to i'd have to go back and listen um got it yeah, I, I like there's little moments with Kevin Kiner's score that like that are really, really good. But but yeah, so he, he makes his way into uh, into like kind of the main hub of where their their base is at. And he gets eyes on um, on the clone shadow uh, and, and Batcher kind of catches a whiff uh, off like immediately and is like something something is off. But that, you mm-hmm. know, Omega kind of um, is like, it's OK. And then, uh, yeah, this clone shadow gets eyes on. Uh, Omega and immediately dials back and and is like, you know, Omega is is here, right? Like that was another one of the targets. Um, and I don't remember. I'm drawing a blank on who specifically he calls. Is it Scorch? Because Hemlock's not in the episode. Yes, it was Scorch. Uh, yeah, X3. Um, X3 basically calls him, um, mm-hmm. and he says, "Have you taken out the operative?" And X3 is like, uh, "Well, I found him, and I've also found Doctor Hemlock's." Uh, he, he's like. I found Dr. Hemlock's prime target. 
Yeah. Um, and Scorch basically says something along the lines of uh, just take her alive, uh, send the coordinates, and we'll send uh, the recovery strike team. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Yeah, because this is kind of towards the end of infiltration, and so he mm-hmm. he calls Scorch, and then he goes back in, and as they they are interrogating simultaneously, like because there was a little bit of points where they're like eating food and stuff like that or whatever, yeah. but um, then they they approach the the clone shadow. Uh, Crosshair immediately recognizes him, like I said, and then also the, that shadow is like, oh, you should be asking him the questions, and Hauser gets very suspicious. But at that point, the door is open, and so the shadow just blasts the, the other takes shadow. Him right, out. And it takes him out, shoots him right in the heart, uh, and immediately they're all, like, ducking down, like, going after this guy. And so that's when uh, when uh, Fireball uh, and, like, and all of them are kind of, you know, flanking around, and Fireball comes up and tries to hit him with the flamethrower, um, mm-hmm. and... Uh, unfortunately does do a little bit, but then gets taken out and uh, one of the thermal detonators falls on the ground and gets right in front of the, the pilot light in front of the flamethrower and blows blows up the whole like kind of entrance. Um, and I can't remember if it was right before this or after this that uh, it may have been before this because I know the uh, X3, as we're calling him, put those detonators on the ship uh, and I can't remember if he detonates those before or after. Um, I want to say it was like during, like yeah. he like he, he makes a shot and then he like kind of sets these charges off. Yeah, um, just to kind of like a... cause chaos. Yeah, um, and give him some some time to escape. Yeah, um, but he gets um, like crushed by this rubble. Uh, which yeah. well, at that point I'm like, well, he's done. Uh, yeah, I thought I, for a second I was like, dude, that guy's dead. Um, yeah, for but, sure. Guess not. Nope. Um, but then, basically, as they as that happens and they're kind of trapped in, uh, the strike team gets called in, and it is led by none other than my boy Wolf. Um, my boy Wolf, he's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and he is taking charge. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're kind of trapped in there, uh, and they start to uh, make their way. Uh, down the stairs and that's kind of where we transition into the next episode I believe um, and uh, and so yeah like their wolf is just he is calling all the shots um, telling people where to go like how to how to trap them in and so Rex is like there's there's basically like one of those small little uh, emergency like pod things that they can mm-hmm. use to get away um, but uh, but yeah then the clone shadow not crushed and is just like gets out of there um, and I believe he speaks briefly to uh, Wolf and the clones. Um, yeah, Wolf is like, uh, like what, 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 what operative are you, or like what, what operation are you a part of, or something? And uh, mm-hmm. X three just says it's classified. Yeah, uh, very Wolf defiant. Yeah, he just says something along the uh, Wolf says something along the lines of, "Okay, well, this is my operation now. Yeah. Uh, like, stop putting the target in jeopardy." Uh, get, get your ass under control. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he, he gives orders to the Republic. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gives orders to, to the Republic commander that he's with, uh, who is named, uh, Hilo. Hilo. Uh, Lieutenant which, like, Hilo. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was neat. Cool. Just, another, another commando name. And, um, and you pointed out that makes a, when he hits his little, uh, when he hits his helmet, it makes a Republic commando game noise, which is very mm-hmm. cool. I just love that they're sourcing all of those sound effects. I just uh, yeah, because because you you know how much I love to sample those. So oh dude, um, yeah, I I just I think forgot that, about that. that. Those are great. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, they go down like this, basically like this hidden path to like go like underneath spiral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so Wolf is like you know trap them in, um, mm. but uh, the uh, the clone shadow is like. He does a pulls a little sneaky and goes yeah. down, and that TK trooper's like, man, whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> well, the, 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 T, the TK trooper is like a uh, commander. Like he went in, and Wolf's like, sail him in. Like <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, I he, don't he doesn't care. care. Um, um, but yeah, it's really cool because they're all like heading down um, and trying to get to this kind of escape, a little escape thing. Um, does not have a hyperdrive. It is very tiny, um, and yeah. uh, and and so then the the shadow like. He repels down out of the window, uh, and mm-hmm. and it notably, like him and and Crosshair throughout the episode are like really going back and forth, even till the very end of the episode. Yeah, um, 
like from from shooting at each other to fist fights like in that that one little scene as he's rappelling down uh and uh and crosshair like hears he like looks up and he he hears all of the troopers uh like trying to flank them in you know um he hears the repel i don't know if he hears the repelling but he sees the shadow repelling down and they like yeah. shoot at each other and uh crosshair does that really cool thing where he like sticks that like detonator on the gun and like shoots yeah. it and blows him up and he like falls down and hit like grabs onto a window it's just really um, cool action right there between the two it is uh and it's it's one of the it's one of the several moments in in this episode that crosshair insists upon staying behind Mm -hmm. uh which is just very interesting for me like he he does this not once but i think twice mm -hmm. um maybe three times where he's basically like you guys go on ahead i'll cover you um mm -hmm. like why why does he want to be that guy so badly is he trying to redeem himself is he trying to just is he or is he trying to you know just see if he's still got the chops with his tremor you know i i don't yeah I don't Which know. He does but hold himself pretty well in this episode, I will say. There's, the trimmer does not seem to be affecting his shots that much in this episode. It well, I definitely think that's why he used the bomb. Um mm -hmm. like he was he was missing those shots and like Yeah. I, as far as crosshair goes, like those were easy shots for him mm -hmm. and he was missing those and he, you could tell that his hand was bothering him. So he just put the, the bomb on there and shot it, yeah. uh, which, which works. Uh, but he does later shoot a, the pilot of a vessel just like from like yeah. really far away. So it's like, okay, yeah. he's still got it from time to time, you know? Yeah. He's, he's, he's still got it. I think, uh, he's just struggling with that. And I'm wondering like, uh, if that tremor is ever going to go away or if it's yeah. something that he's just going to have to get used to. I, I did fail to mention something about Crosshair that was very important is that Crosshair was supposed to be one of those shadows. They, like they mentioned that they were trying to right. condition, condition him in the first episode or sorry, like infiltration that like mm. they did, they could, it didn't work on him that he was like, he was too rebellious um, of a clone and they couldn't condition him properly. Yeah. He mentioned something about, uh just that that he was a defective clone it mm -hmm. it has its uh, advantages or whatever yeah um so that 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 makes me think but it makes you think um, as well yeah it, it, but i noticed as well that they were like they mentioned that the shadows like their their minds are completely wiped their identities are completely wiped they're completely mm -hmm. blank slate, slates of just being these you know assassins or you know operatives yeah they even take away like their their means of identification um mm -hmm. so like you really just don't know which clone that is right um so uh yeah then then we end up uh getting into uh they, they kind of like get, get to the forest no 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 they they get into the little escape ship Mm -hmm. um which ends up getting shot down so they crash down into the yeah. into the forest which that operative shoots with pretty good accuracy um, i know dude which, like this which, again this guy's hyper lethal man I, yeah i and i have something to point out later on i'll mention that there is a certain character that has that is right underneath crosshair apparently this was mentioned um, that has mm. that sort of accuracy, but uh, this was pointed out to me in, in the same live stream earlier this week. But uh, okay, but yeah. So they, they crash down, and so they the people uh, the wolf sends forces to go after them, and it, it's a lot of just kind of per pursuit through the forest, um, you know, cat and mouse sort of thing uh, until ultimately they're kind of they're kind of getting flanked and they're they're shooting. Yeah. Uh, like I said, early crosshair shoots the the pilot of one of those uh, one of those um, shuttles. And, and then and he does a Wilhelm scream as the gunship yeah, goes down. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that as well. Um, and then the, the clone shadow is still tracking them. Um, oh, and also when the thing when he got crushed, uh, his like little tech thing, uh, tech, tech, uh, <laughs> it got it got crushed, so he couldn't use it. But um, but yeah, then we get again another one of those moments where Crosshair kind of stays behind to hold off the clone shadow towards the mm -hmm. end here, uh, and uh, he uses like. Uh, thermals which some I don't think this is true but someone tried to point out that in the thermals this clone looked like it had no heat in its legs but the the panel that I saw it definitely did and I, okay. and like that's like heat really focuses more on like the torso with thermal sites anyway so like yeah. I don't know how, how credible that is people were like oh maybe this clone shadow has robot legs and I'm like that's maybe. like a that that's like an Arkham City detective mode Joker level Easter egg. Like if yeah. that if that were true, um, 
but uh, I'm curious b- before, if, I can, if I can find it real quick while you're talking. Well, I was going to mention before Hunter, uh, not Hunter, <laughs> but before Crosshair breaks off to uh, to say, you know, like, I'll, I'll cover us uh, again. Um, when they crash on the little escape pod, uh, Crosshair asks Omega if she's all right and if she has all mm-hmm. of her resources and stuff like that. And she's like, you're just as bad as Hunter. And Crosshair says, I'm much worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which uh, I just think it's so sweet on how uh, he's so protective of her now, mm-hmm. um, especially because like he he said like st- stay close to me, um, like yeah. he I, I just love that he's he's going like uh, full full force on being a yeah, protective she, big brother now. Yeah, which is even when that earlier in the point where she's mimicking him, you can tell Hunter gives this look of kind of like disdain, or like I don't think yeah. I think he's maybe a little jealous, you know, because Hunter is yeah. used to doing that. Um, which, uh, but I don't think he's at least currently too hung up on it, but she's definitely like really just following the lead of Crosshair. I just wanted to say also, I did look that scene up while you were spe- speaking. You can, mm-hmm. there is definitely heat in his legs. I don't know what people okay, were talking yeah. about. I People were grasping at straws there, but. Uh, it's, it's it, Star Wars fans, man. We, we'll, we'll come up with anything. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, she also is like, they do these really cool tactics where, uh, she has like smoke grenades these like spiral smoke grenades mm-hmm. and they're doing just some really cool stuff um i found it it was interesting that they are really being frivolous on who they are stunning and who they are killing like i thought they were just gonna like oh they'll kill the tks and then they'll they'll stun the clones but no they're doing it for like either because crosshair shoots the like he kills that clone in that in that uh that shuttle when um, uh yeah when when the the republic commando and the the tks and uh, clones show up um mm-hmm. yeah they, i mean they're they're just straight up killing them um yeah the the only one that i noticed that they actively stunned was when uh there was a trooper that was on the ground and was like slowly getting up and so mm-hmm. then they stunned him there and i was like okay that feels like a kind of like the restrictions that they put on peter parker uh if he's in the black suit or whatever um mm, that like yeah. that, that like he can't do this if you know xyz and so i was like okay so maybe the batch uh in terms of uh their, their rating restriction for the show yeah they they can shoot to kill on people that are shooting to kill at them but if there's a downed enemy that's quote-unquote defenseless they have to stun so yeah. i don't know i was thinking of it of like a <laughs> I don't know ESRB kind of uh, yeah viewpoint. Well, yeah, um, they want to put some I guess specific morals. But even then, like Hunter comes up behind a guy and they have it on. I think a lot of the other troopers have theirs on stun, but not mm-hmm. the clone shadow. Clone shadow, he's got he never uses stun at all because he. I mean, yeah, he kills Nimic just cold blooded, just one shot Nimic's down, which is just so rough. Um, oh, but. But yeah, they're trying to escape. They're trying to get to this extraction point where uh, where Gregor is going to come pick him up, and um, and this is a really a good highlight where uh, Crosshair and and the Shadow they're they're fighting. They get knocked into this river, um, mm-hmm. and then they fall down that, and they're getting a really cool hand to hand combat sequence uh, yeah. where this clone Shadow is doing a number on Crosshair, bro. Like I he know is, again, like this guy's hyper lethal. Crosshair was yeah. choking in that fight. Yeah, like from the knife to like literally there's at one point that shadow is just like uppercutting him, you know, with yeah. no problem. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy is like one of the most efficient soldiers we've ever seen. Yeah, um, he's uh, what, what what does he say in the fight? He's like uh, he says something along the lines of uh, you had your chance to be one of us, mm-hmm. um, which is very so someone I believe it was Will pointed that out that it's a very interesting. It could be an interesting parallel of the fact that maybe tech is so like the the fact that they're highlighting sorry not tech that this crosshair this that crosshair and the shadow are going for blow for blow because that is a weird thing of like you had your chance to be one of us could indirectly if it was tech mm-hmm. meaning like that could be him to saying that of being part of the batch right like yeah, you had your chance to be one of us and it's, it's very like true. it it's just I'll, I'll, before we get into that, because I think that's what we have to talk about, uh, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and kind of wrap this up. That, uh, that ultimately Crosshair's about to be drowned, but then uh, Hauser stunts. Hauser saves back. him. Hauser, my man, uh, double taps with the stun. The shadow goes down the river, and then he uh, he uh, grabs uh, Crosshair. And as they make their escape to the, the landing point, um, Wolf and all of these clones intercept them and, and there's this really good dialogue between Rex and Wolf where Wolf is like 
still very much a soldier of the empire. Like he, like it's, yeah. um, but, uh, Rex is like, you know, you know, this isn't right. Like yeah, she's just a kid. You've got to let us go. And of course, Wolf being the homie and, and none of the clones, they all, they all listen to, uh, None of the clones disobey uh, Wolf. They all follow his orders. Uh, yeah. And ultimately, uh, they get away with uh, with Gregor, uh, which I want to know where he's been at. I'm curious. Um, yeah, I'm wondering what he's doing. Uh, and uh, he's he, his armor looks a little different from the brief shot that we got to see. Um, yeah. I didn't see like any of the um the the marks on his helmet, so maybe he got some new gear uh, when he blew up. <laughs> um, he, well, he did. Remember in season one, he had like all white clone armor. Like he didn't have yeah. the markings, but he does well, he have. Had... Yeah, he like he. They were like they put him all in new armor again. But I did mm-hmm. notice that on his gauntlet, there's like a there's a yellow paint job thing now. Uh, yeah. At the end of the episode, but uh, but yeah, um, Wolf, but Wolf and they they kind of they s- split ways, and then. We cut back to the waterfall where the trooper, the shadow, survives. still survived, and uh, and he's all right. And it's like you didn't have to show that, yeah, but you did. You know, this this, this is a, a very relevant uh, antagonist here. He's yep. he, he is a person. You know, there's a reason for modulating his voice. Um, so we'll have to see what that means. But I, I will say right before, um, or like as as uh the the batch are leaving the batch and crew mm-hmm. are leaving uh the the clone command c- commando i assume hilo um turns to wolf and he says uh but but sir they're traitors and yeah. wolf says uh they're clones we owe them that yeah uh which i i you know just really like that scene L- lots of mutual respect for for clones um mm-hmm. I'm, so uh i'm yeah. very curious uh like when wolf is going to come back into play cuz clearly like you know, you got to set up where he's at in Rebels and and we're, that's like, but he's not fully turned, right? Like he just, no. he just let them go and he's, but he still goes back <laughs> with the Empire. And I find it interesting that Rex wasn't pleading with him more, um, considering I would say yeah. that Rex, Cody and Wolf were like the main three kind of, I, okay, Wolf wasn't super highlighted in Clone Wars, but when you think of Clone Wars and you think of, of the three main clone commanders or captains of the of, of the legions in clone wars you think of cody rex and wolf at least yeah i i mean honestly i think i would go so far as to say that at that point the the captains and commanders pretty much like kind of all know each other i wouldn't be surprised if they had yeah. a group chat <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, exactly um like j- just imagine uh like if, if the galactic marines were there it was like a snow planet and rex is like you know bakara you know that that, yeah. that would just i'd just be really cool um, but I think he, I think he didn't plead more because he knew, uh, he knew the stakes. He knew that they had to leave. And I mean, as we've seen in Rebels, uh, Wolf's inhibitor chip is a lot more aggressive than the others. Um, and so, mm-hmm. you know, we're, uh, at, at that point, I'm not sure if Rex was like, uh, this probably isn't the best time to try and convince him. Cause you know, yeah. I tried once and I'm not going to, I'm not going to barter here. I got to leave. Um, so is it, uh, and you might know this more than me. Is it hit or miss on whether their uh, their chips are like still kind of working or not? Because like with someone like Hauser, uh, and there's like other clones as well. Um, I think there was another clone in season two that they they both had um, similar experiences where their chip kind of stopped working after a while you know like it was like okay, yeah. it, hit, it hit a point and then it was starting to like not the order was starting to wear off but that i'm like it comes it now gets to this question i'm like okay is wolf's just still really really like active or is he also kind of pulling a crosshair where he's doing it more of like a uh an intentional thing because i feel like it I, I mean clearly it's wearing off to some extent because i don't feel like the inhibitor chip would have let them leave you know but he was so, able to make that choice yeah so the, the way that i'm seeing it right now is that uh because brains each and every brain on this earth is completely uh distinct from mm-hmm. from from one another um they they're all different you know different kinds of chemicals and medications affect people differently so uh if you want to think about it in the way of uh, the very first time this concept is introduced with Tup, um, his went off super, super early. It was, you know, viewed as like a malfunction. 
Maybe that was because his brain just didn't register with it properly. Uh, with the batch, their inhibitor chips activated much, much later uh, because mm -hmm. of, you know, their defective, quote unquote, defective genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that I'm seeing it is that after this order kind of took place, the chips just seemingly started to deteriorate. Um, but perhaps in some clones brains, uh, AKA Wolf, like it just kind of, it sticks a little bit more because we have that mm. scene of him in rebels where he, uh, he, uh, like, the, I don't know if he sees Kanan or he's reminded of the Jedi and like, he's like, he's like Jedi. Like he's, he just yeah. thinks that, you know, yeah, I forgot about time that. to go sicko mode. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think in, in Wolf's brain, it definitely resides a, a bit mm. more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's really up to interpretation on just kind of how they deteriorate in the brain. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, I mean, obviously, he's going to have to come back into play at some point. Um, I, I would not be surprised if yeah. he is he is very pivotal in possibly like the revolt from within the inside, you know? Yeah, uh, it's it's going to be a situation where like he probably has to choose. Uh, mm. and, and he will choose, hopefully, hopefully, you know, Cody will be there to kind of also be a part of that convincing thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that Cody hasn't showed up yet. Um, but well, we'll see where he's at there. I mean, there's a theory to that, which we might as well just go and get into. All right. Let, let's go into it. Uh, clone, clone X3, um, is, uh, it could be a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. I have heard many different theories. Yeah. Um, Grayson, what what have you heard so far? What what out, out of all this stuff? What have you heard? In fact, we we can go back and forth as to who we have heard that this could be. Um, I've only heard of three before the show came or the season came out. It was four, but now it would be physically impossible for it to be the fourth. So like that fourth one being Crosshair, which just can't be. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone was like, "Oh, it's Crosshair! It's Crosshair!" I'm like, "It's not." Um, I mean. I'll uh, the first I mean everybody right now thinks it's tech like mm -hmm. that's yeah. and and to be honest that is where I lean to the most now it could be a bait and switch uh like you said yeah but that's the one that I think most people are are kind of locked into um and I know there's some people that are like no like let tech stay dead but it's like dude again they didn't show his body they were very mm -hmm. intentional about that the shadows are blank slates uh, and their minds this, are wipes. Th this shadow's survivability is insane. Yes, uh, he he survived a, another great fall from from the uh, the waterfall. So I mean, yes, this kind of shows to his survivability there. Yeah, um, there was somebody in the live stream back on Wednesday that was saying that uh, it was noted that Tech, un other than Crosshair, Tech is the best shot in the batch. Mm. Um, which is That's like true. I was like, okay. There you go. Also, again, I know I kept making puns about it constantly throughout these episodes, but he does have very high technical skills when it comes to his ship and everything. Like he's always on the little his arm thing and stuff. Um, yeah, and he looks kind of he, he seems to look a little bit uh, distinct from the other X clones that we've seen with like his backpack and the the different kinds of uh, like, yeah, the, the tech that he uses. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the only thing that it initially deterred me was just the way that he operates and the way that he fights. Uh, he's mm -hmm. a lot more lethal than I would say Tech usually is in terms of his uh, combat prowess. Because mm -hmm. um, Tech usually just uses like a pistol. But yep. X3 is like, you know, grenades and snipers and knives. And, you know, like he's, he's going all in. But then at the same time with this clone conditioning, uh, you take away the personality but you know the the training's still and there. Training, so, yep. Yeah, and and Tech's personality, like he just kind of uh, affixed to that sort of modem operandus. But now, uh, yeah. you know, uh, he's just using this stuff. So, and then also uh, the the voice. You know, when when you when you've got the voice modulator, uh, you can still hear that like the way that he talks. It sounds like Tech. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still clearly D, you know. But it's like, yeah. Why would you need unless and I I will. I would next week I will gladly go and check. Uh, but from what I can tell, those other clone the other clone shadows, like they didn't have voice modulation because they're just clones. I don't think so. I don't uh, think so. And it's like why like if it wasn't unless they're just doing it for a creative story purpose just to just to subvert audience expectations, it's like 
I think the Empire would put a modulator on somebody that they know has a distinct voice. Tech has a distinct voice compared to all the other clones, you know? Yeah, I... At this point, it, it makes me question. Because it is so obvious that it's tech that if they... That, that yeah. like, I feel like they are doing a bait and switch. Like, what yeah. if it really is just someone or something else? And, you know, we're supposed to think that it's tech. It just feels... I, I agree with you, but at the same time, that would make me mad because that feels, like, cheap. Because someone yeah. made, like, the Maroc comparison, right? And they're like, oh, it's Maroc and Ahsoka all over again. And I was like, yeah, but, like, Maroc, I will say, like, I will admit, was not nearly as focused on as this guy is. Like, they made yeah. it, like, you know, there was never a moment in Ahsoka with Maroc where they're like, oh, he falls off a ledge or something, and then they, like, sh they insert a scene of him still being alive, right? We like, never got just, a... Yeah, we never got a he, scene with Maroc alone. He's, You know what he's more like in Ahsoka? Maroc is more like Scorch, how he's been in Bad Batch, right? Where yeah, like, pretty he's much. He's just there, and you're like, oh, I keep seeing this guy, right? But this clone shadow specifically, like, they're showing, oh, he lived from the from the crash of this rebel. Oh, he lived mm -hmm. from this waterfall. He's he has a voice modulator. He's saying things like, oh, you know, uh, you had your chance or whatever. Like yeah. it's weird stuff like that that it just gets you thinking, but it's like, would they do just a bait and switch like that? Like, wouldn't that be kind of a slap in the face of the audience? But like, again, also we as the audience, they know we're not dumb. So yeah. it's like, it's tough. Like I, I really could just go 50-50 on the matter. I'd be okay if it wasn't tech. I mean, I I, yeah, I think yeah. it is. I'm at this point. I'm I'm like ninety percent. Yeah, that's tech. But like, there there's the ten percent there that I'm like, they they might be trying to throw us for a loop here. It could be yeah. like something wild. And the stuff that I've heard is yeah. that, uh, like you you brought up, it could be Cody, which mm -hmm. would really break my heart. That would really yeah. upset me if it were Cody. Um, but I don't think it is because of the cadence and like just the way that he talks. It's very unlikely. Yeah. Um, I've heard Sev. Sev is a, a very interesting uh, theory there, though I really doubt it. Um, it's just yeah. like we we've I don't know, just seeing Crosshair and this guy go toe like like toe for toe, blow for blow, um, in terms of their sniper prowess and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like th that could be cool. Um, but outside audiences will go like you know who the heck is this? Um, yeah, that's the thing is I I, I love the Republic Commando stuff. But you're taking it just in the context of, okay, our audience has watched the movies, Clone Wars, yeah. Rebels, and this. Let's just say that. Or maybe they just watched Clone Wars and this, right? They're literally only in one scene. You know, only people who played those games or know those, like, that's where that payoff is with Scorch. Mm -hmm. And worries me why they may not do anything with Scorch. But it's like, yeah, okay, would it be cool if it was Sev? Sure. But at the same time, like... Why wouldn't you just put Sev in his regular armor? You know, yeah, like yeah. Unless, at that point. I, I, and it's just, I mean, I think the second most likely theory is Cody. Like, but my only semblance of that is I'm like, okay, Cody is, you know, he's him and Crosshair did fight next to each other for a little bit, and he knows mm. the way the, how these clones operate. Um, but like, other than that, like, I mean, okay, what are we just supposed to expect that like Hemlock, like when he ran away, Hemlock just snatched him up and was like, oh, you know, you're you're a I don't know. It's weird. It it feels it just feels a little too not as emo there has to be some sort of payoff. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um and then and then the, I think probably the the last one that I heard which is just absolutely wild. I mean like I I'm not against it, but it's just weird is that it is a clone of Crosshair, which is just like I mean Okay, uh, I mean, like, it, it would be interesting, the, the the theory went was that, uh, like, how it went was, um, Crosshair was resistant to the conditioning, but they wanted his ability, and so they were like, okay, well, we're just gonna clone him. But mm. it, th that brings into question of, uh, that is a way too accelerated clone, uh, that would maybe be, like, a, a year at, at the most, and even yeah. that is a stretch. Um, be a baby. Uh, maybe, maybe they could have uh, figured out a way to implement uh, Crosshair's genetic modifications to a different clone. Yeah. Uh, maybe like import that because that was our that, that was our guess with a uh, potentially Scar Squadron. Mm -hmm. um, was that maybe that's just how they did that? 
so yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's tech, but um, I, we'll I remember see. People, people are like, "Oh, Boba Fett," and I'm like, "Boba Fett is the same age as Omega, dude." Like, I swear to God, dude. As much as I love Boba, everyone will see a guy in a mask and they're like, "It's Boba Fett." Like it, yeah. it happens every single time. Yeah, I, I think Boba's. I mean, I do think he's showing up in this this show. Like, I would not. I I very much believe he will show up. Um, but well, we got I, Daniel I don't, Logan. We got so. Daniel Logan. Uh, I just got done with with the other guys. Unfortunately, you didn't get to. Lucky you. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> with with Dark Disciple, Boba yeah. shows up in that. We know Ventress is showing up. We already know Cad and Finnick are both be are going to be in it, which are crucial characters to Boba Fett's yeah. mythos in canon. Like. Boba, and now with the, you know, with the Omega thing, like, there's too many links for Boba not to show up. I'd be, I would be shocked if he doesn't show up. But, like, he's not, he's not this guy. Like, I could, like, he doesn't, he, oh, what? Dude, doesn't make, there, there's no reason for him to be there. Um, Boba's still a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know, man. Like, at, at this point, we're, we're basically at the halfway point of the season. Um yep. There is so much left that needs to happen. So so that is just making me go, how are we going to wrap this up? I mean, is there going to be like, are these last ep like episodes going to have like some big run times? Or mm. are we just not doing filler whatsoever? It's not happening. These are all narratively driven episodes. And I mean, if that's yeah. the case, I'm super excited about it. But I was going to say, like, that means they're they're really filling this season up, which I would be very glad to see. I, we went back through the trailer. Um... And, uh, and, oh, I, oh, I forgot we mentioned, we, we forgot to mention one last thing with the end of the episode, which was oh, yeah? and, both in the first episode and the end of the second episode. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that because I completely blanked the mm -hmm. M count thing. They determined right. that, that yeah. Omega, they're like, oh, she, they ask her, that was kind of in that in-between section of when they're eating and stuff. They're like, what was going on at Tantus? She's like, mm -hmm. oh, they're taking all our blood. They were taking my blood. She didn't specifically say if Nala, that Nala say was throwing away hers, but they were like, oh, they were looking for wow. something called M count. And Rex is like, I've heard of that before, but I don't know specifically what it is. Um, and then at the end of, I believe episode two, or, sorry, I, I say episode two, the second episode of this bunch extraction, Rex uh and, and I and Hunter speak and he's like she he's like you've got to figure out why the Empire wants Omega like yeah. what is going on with Omega um yeah. someone made a very interesting point to me uh shout out to Lainey she was saying that if anybody knows about the M count thing from what we know of characters in this show it would be Ventress yeah 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 Mm. Which I was like, that's a really good point. So shout out to Lane for making that because I, I did not even think about that being a thing. So some people, she was saying that it's possible that they catch rumbling. They're trying to find out what is up with Omega and they catch rumblings of this force user and they end up finding it's Ventress and they're going to her to find these answers. Right. And I'm like, yeah, hmm, interesting. I like that theory. I'm really, again, I'm just really wondering how all of these things are going to come together. But it's also, it, it feels very satisfying because uh, as as it has potentially been mentioned before, um, Bad Batch Season 3 is like kind of the, the culmination of all of these Clone Wars shows. Yeah. Um, and so seeing everything come together, like like the clones and Ventress and, and the bounty hunters, you know, we're, we're taking yeah. sources from all of the big parts about the Clone Wars and just kind of uh, putting them in a big finale so i'll yeah. be happy to see that um yeah. but speaking of like a potential uh finale or like just something happening afterwards uh i've been hearing like whispers of people saying that the reason why echo's been getting sidelined is because uh after this they might continue on with a rex and echo type show or something um hey as long as it's good I'm as long as it's that. good, I'm I'm here for it. I I don't know what they could continue to do, yeah. Um, especially like if the the Tantus thing is resolved with this season, um. But hey, I'm all for it. I I know that I know that D. Bradley Baker is is down for more roles as, as yeah. clones. My my only worry is, and I know Tony's listening, calling me the fun police. My only worry is, I'm like, I don't want it to become like a a, you know something that they beat to death where they're like oh yeah. and here's the end of the bad batch and now here's this because that's how it was with clone wars and i'm like okay <laughs> yeah. like how long is this going to keep going like again i love these characters i don't want to see them go but also like 
I'm the Kanan Jarrus guy, right? I've got him right there, got him yeah. right here. What made that thing, what makes Kanan so special to me is that there was a start point and there was an end point, and that's what made it beautiful. And it's like, mm. I like, I like obviously there has to be an end point where you connect to Rebels, and yes, there's more time, but like, in my mind, this show ends, and all right, Rex and and Wolf and Gregor are the la- some of the last three clones left, and that's where they they're oh, like man. we're done. We gotta tap out. We gotta we gotta hunker down. You know, this is we're against all odds. And then that's where we pick up back with them in Rebels. Would that suck to see? Yes, but I wanted to have a good payoff. And so again, if if an Echo and Rex show happens, as long as it makes sense to where they get to that point and it's good stuff, I'm down. But I'm like. It, it just it's like this roller coaster of emotions of like yeah it's just like oh here's a new show guys oh okay sweet we're getting more okay it's done but here's another one here's and you're another like another one yeah and but so like again I'm not against it I just hope it's uh it's not milking something right if there is another I agree if there is another animated show I think it would be good to just uh, pursue more like just different plots um, I I'm all for I mean I'm in the camp that they basically need to not end it with this whole era, but they need to fully transition and and start making content after Return of the Jedi. Ma- literally make a Clone oh, Wars show, yeah. an animated Clone Wars show, but it's it's the equivalent to the Clone Wars between episodes two and three where you're getting your regular cast of characters of, of Padme yeah. and Obi-Wan and Ahsoka and Anakin, but make it original trilogy characters. Make it regular, a reoccurring show. I don't know what you would call it, of animated Clone Wars style, Luke and Leia and Han and Chewie and R2 and 3PO and Lando and it's been in, like in Clone Wars style with that level of quality, I would love that so much. That would just, make me so happy. That that's a that's another at least seven plus season show right there, you know? Yeah. And you get around the issue of of having the you know, the live action uh weird AI stuff you know like yeah. you could get higher voice actors you could even hire mark hamill and just dh his voice like yeah you could do that you know and uh and you know i think you know billy lord would be a really good like voice acting oh, for yeah. for leia you could definitely you, there's agree. people that can that can be really good han that's what i think now will they do it i don't know obviously we're still getting tales of the jedi but uh the, i i am we i think we've talked about this a lot but i am they are not getting rid of this anima- animation style anytime soon. They've like perfected it, dude. They perfected it, and it's very—it's just very successful. Yeah. Like it—it it doesn't, it doesn't miss. It hits e- basically every time. And I mean, like so some other ideas for animated shows that they could do, like if they want to do like some bounty hunter, like like, like a bounty hunter show. Because Absolutely. We, we know how much they love those bounty hunter arcs. Like they were all over in the Clone Wars, and they're even more so in Bad Batch. Uh, which mm-hmm. we're about to see more of. Like, give us some, mm-hmm. you know, uh, underbelly-based shows. If you want to do a Knights of the Old Republic, you know, style Clone Wars show, I would go crazy for that. That's so much open space. Um, God, dude, like, they, there, there's so many options here. Um, yeah. And so when, when they wrap up with Bad Batch, like, I really hope that they stretch their legs and, and, and do something fun. Because, I mean, like, yeah. now, that's not to say that what they what they have, have done is not fun. I, I love it. I'm <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I really want to see more. I think that that could yeah. be great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give, give me a Tales of Grievous show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, it's I just so, want to see it's, more Grievous. It's just every episode is like three minutes and of him just getting really cocky and then running away. I mean, that's uh, it. And it's just a cycle. <laughs> I'll never give Oh, uh, by the uh we didn't even, uh, listen, I know you didn't read Dark Disciple. Grievous does show up in that book and he gets dunked on in that as well. And I which I think is oh. <laughs> so funny. Uh if you Grievous, listen, uh, shout out isn't... to the sorry, go ahead. Grievous is never gonna beat those allegations. <laughs> no, dude, he I, I, I joked in the live stream, I was like, yo, Grievous sucks. <laughs> I like they hate him. They hate him more than than Echo, that's for sure. But uh, yeah. if you haven't, if you if you want to be prepped for uh, Ventress's uh, inevitable appearance in Bad Batch, Cole did not get to make it, but we, mm. uh, that being me, Beyond the Dune Sea, uh, Star Wars Sith, and uh, Diamond Figs, we did our uh, Tales from the Archive episode. We covered the whole book. I summarized it. Um, we had some thoughts about it. I'll say that, but if you, you don't feel like reading it, you want to go get caught up to speed and hear our thoughts, uh, go do that. Cause I think, I think Ventress is right around the corner. I think, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't, 
So we got to do our, our ritual. We got to look up the next couple episode names. All now right. that we got to recalculate. I think the Harbinger is not this week or this upcoming week, but it is next week. Um, and I'm convinced that the Harbinger is Ventress. The next one is called Bad Territory. Okay. That, um, I think, is easily going to be Finnick and uh, Bounty Hunter stuff. Yeah, and then, and then the, the one after that is um, the Harbinger. What do you think? <sighs> uh, so so bad territory. Um, it's really hard to say because we're we're definitely in we we're definitely in bad territory. We've lost mm -hmm. uh the, that clone rebellion cell that Rex had. Don't know if there are other ones. Um, currently on the run from the Empire. Mm -hmm. Uh. So really, really unsure. Bad territory could mean a whole lot of things, like a metaphorical uh, place, uh, actual physical place. Uh, really not sure. I, I have I, I speculated that there's a shot in the trailer where um, there's like they're on this boat and, the, and it literally <laughs> we kept on calling it uh, Star Wars Everglades because that's what it looks like uh, mm -hmm. or Star Wars QS, you know, and uh and there's like this alligator thing that like bites Wrecker and yanks them off the ship. And if you oh, if yeah. you freeze frame it, Finnick is is driving the boat. Um, okay. And I'm like, okay, that's e like it. Giant alligators like ripping Wrecker out of a, a boat. I'm like, that sounds maybe that's too on the nose because I think I mean you're obviously right. Like it could be a ton of different things. Like they're very good about making these titles specific enough yet vague enough for you to be like. I have no idea, <laughs> um, but uh, but I think what is the definition of a harbinger? I'm looking that up right now. I've always loved that word. Um, uh, it, it's basically like someone that that brings about some sort of thing. Um, okay, okay, a person or thing that announces or indicates the approach of something. Come on, Ventress, yeah. knowing what an M count is, like she. I mean, you think she would know, right? Like. I mean, like M count, yes. Um, yeah. My my question is, I'm wondering how that situation would would come about as to say, uh, gee, if only we knew what what M count meant. And Adventures is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like because like they, I don't know why they would think to ask her what it is unless they know that it's related to the Force. Um. So oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're I, right. They would have to know. Um, cause mm. like they don't, they, they don't know what it is. So unless she like overhears it or she becomes a part of the active mission, which I doubt, I don't understand mm. why she would join them. Um, uh, then I'm not really sure. Uh, but as for like, just the idea of the Harbinger, like w w I don't, I, I don't doubt that like, she probably is this Harbinger, but Harbinger of what? I I'm wondering mm. what exactly, uh, Ventress or just this character could bring mm. about here. Um, it's vague. It's vaguer yeah, like, than I what, thought it meant. Yeah. What? What is it? What does it mean that the harbinger of of what? What? What kind of devastation? What kind of event? Uh, is it a good mm. or a bad thing? Definitely, probably a bad thing. But um, yeah. I, don't I mean, know. it could be. It could be another clone. You know, like some some more information that we. I don't know. It's so vague. Like it's hard to. Yeah. I'm just I'm along for the ride, like we always say. Maybe it's say. Boba. I mean, that would be kind of wild. Uh, I don't know, man. I have no idea. I, I don't know. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Can't wait to see what the rest of the season uh, has in store for us. Um, yes. Yeah. That's, I, honestly, have, I think that's all I got. That's all I got as well. I don't think there's anything uh, else I can think of other than I very much enjoyed these episodes. Um, mm -hmm. So with that being said, chat pack. Chat pack, yes. Fantastic. I can't even remember what ours was last week. Uh, oh, never mind. I remember <laughs> the ATST. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's go... Let's go right, let's go for number 26. Oh, which Star Wars, sorry, which Star Wars character do you wish was your best friend? Was my best friend? Yeah. Um, sheesh, man. Sid. Uh, no. <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Gets uh, backstabbed. Pal Palpatine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um... That'd be kind of wild, though, if you were Palpatine's best friend, like if he actively liked you as a person yeah. and you don't yeah. understand why. 
Um, well, most of his friends, even what we saw in Plagueis, just get turned into his, like, thralls, so... Yeah, they're just kind of, like, useful to him. Yeah. Um, and he thinks like, that they're funky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, he's like, oh, you can help me achieve a goal. That's why I like you. Yeah. Um... Man. Well, let's see. I think having HK-47 as a, as a best friend would be really I great. Mean, to have him on your um, side would be a good thing, yes. Yeah, I don't I don't know why, but like him him having such disdain for what he believes to what what he calls meat bags, but then yeah. he thinks but then he thinks that you're neat uh yeah. would be would be pretty cool. Um, In the same vein as your your answer, for me, Huang. I mean Huang, yeah, I'd be, love to have Huang as a best friend. One of the um, highlights of ah- Ahsoka for me, and just I'm like, man, he is such a good companion character because he didn't really fill that role until Ahsoka. But I'm like, man, like he's he's funny, he's witty, he's smart. He knows how to make lightsabers. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Grace is all about that. I I think another good choice that I think you might agree with. I would love to have uh, Cal as a friend. Cal oh, Kestis. dude. I'd love to have Cal as a friend. I'd love to have uh, Ezra as a friend. Ezra would be a oh, great friend. Oh, Ezra would be such a home. I mean, uh, I considering Amon Asfandi is basically Ezra, and the little bit that I yeah. did get to meet Amon, he was the like the most chill guy ever. Like I so know. cool. Immediate, immediately ask your name. I'm like, that's Ezra right there. Ezra would be would be great. That would be really cool. Um, Having Yoda as your best friend would be very nice. Be, uh, to, um, inviting him to, to birthday parties would be something. <laughs> He's I like just, smuggling cake. I, I don't know why, but like the, the concept of Yoda having a best friend is kind of odd to me. I don't, I, I'm not sure why. I think it's just because he, he, he's an old monk. And so yeah. you just don't see him with the concept of, of friendship. You just see him with yeah. the concept of his cause. Um, Obi Wan would be a great friend. Uh, Anakin, in most cases, would be a great friend. Um, I'm a big Han guy. I think Han would be a great Han, friend. Han, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, honestly, in kind of the inverse, uh, having Boba as your best friend would be pretty pretty cool. Yeah, um, Boba likes you. That's a dub. Yeah, um, Chewie, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. R two. Chewie, man. R two. Uh, honestly, like. Pretty much, like a, a lot of characters. I a lot of, have a lot of characters. So, my so we get, we friend. we gotta nail it to one. Okay. One a per, right. one for each of us. To think on our answers that we have said. Hmm. I'm I'm, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just looking over at all my figures, just trying to get some ideas. Because <laughs> <laughs> whenever I get asked a question that has to do with like a lot of. Uh, characters or something or like if someone's like what's what are some of your favorite games i'm like ah i've suddenly forgotten everything i've ever played or seen or done before it's so Um, real (laughs) so oh man i gotta i gotta choose one that's so unfair um hmm i that's so tough man i'm i'm choosing between three uh and it's really hard i I think just because I think he would make me like just a very happy person and would just be a great friend to me because it's just who his character is. I think I'm going to go Chewie. Chewie, um, yeah. Like Chewie. Yeah. And, and I, I'm like, weird. I don't know why I'm like getting like emotional thinking about this, but I remember like uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, we, <laughs> we went to Hollywood studios the last time that I went and we went to one of the character meet and greets and Chewie like immediately he gave me a hug you know oh, and like man. and and I was like I got emotional like he was like we were talking he was kind of uh he we were like having some banter and I was like speaking some like fake shrewook because I'm a nerd and <laughs> uh and he and he gave both me and Rachel like the biggest hug you know and That's like so sweet, chewy man. hugs dude they hit different and I just think like you know even within the context of like the sequel trilogy like in the original trilogy and even the Clone Wars, like, Chewie is nothing but, like, when you're on his side, he is nothing but a good friend, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I love me Chewie. <sighs> well, I I think for me, I would, uh, I think I might honestly choose uh, Han. Um, he was my, he was in my, my three, yeah. Yeah, because I think uh, for, for me, um, the... I, I just I decided to take a look at um, my best friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <laughs> uh, I 
I, I took a second to just kind of think about what is it about them that makes them my best friend. And I think that, uh, like, just take take you, for example, or like our, our mutual uh, friend Jacob. Um, I, for some reason, I, I have best friends that, that just kind of push me. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we have, even though you and I have very, very similar interests and very, very similar, you know, just like personalities, like in, in that same way, you and I have, uh, just, we, 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 ta we tackle life extremely differently. Yep. Um, and I think we, we kind of complement each other in that way. I, I like having someone that can teach me different things. And I think, um, having Han as a best friend would just be really, really great. Uh, yeah. because, um, not only is he in infallibly loyal, I will die on the hill that, that Han is a Hufflepuff, uh, until the end of my days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I just think that him as a best friend for me would just really help my growth. Um, yeah. So and he's yeah. a, and he's like, he would, he could just be such a fun guy to be around. Like, in a like frustratingly fun in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But like, I, I think about, and nobody laughs on screen, but like, you just think of Han's moments in the original trilogy. He is undoubtedly the funniest character in the original trilogy. He is. And like, he, he <laughs> scoffs, he scoffs. Like he doesn't like go like, ha ha ha, you know, but like there, there's multiple times where like he looks at somebody, he's like, like yeah. he just kind of pulls and, that face. And and his like, his little one-liner jokes and, and the way he like, when he's, dude, <laughs> <laughs> One moment I'll never not laugh at is an Empire Strikes Back when the box falls on his head. Like his <laughs> scream, bro, makes me laugh every time. Yeah. Like that's just Harrison Ford is just just like having such a good time. Uh, and of course, like you know, uh, uh, everything's fine here. Uh, how are you? Like it just you know, Han is just great. We're, we're gonna die here, you know? Like, he's yeah. instead of, like, looking to Luke. <laughs> or, like, in Return of the Jedi, same thing, where he's just, like, uh, he's, like, oh, great. Like, just, you know, he's just so, I, I love, uh, he was, like, I can see a whole lot better now. <laughs> you know, it's... It's all right, it's, I can see a whole lot better. Uh, uh, even, like, in Solo, like, I think he's just, he's... He's great. He's got that smug attitude. Yeah. I find, yeah. I find it funny that we chose Han and, and Chewie in like a mm -hmm. very coincidental way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I, I kind of thought about it in the sense as well as like if I was if I was in the Star Wars, like if I was just thrown into the universe, um, do I know a whole lot about it? Yeah. But I think it would also be good to have someone that's well traveled, that knows a lot about the galaxy and just how it works and is very good at just sufficient self-sufficiency to just yeah. kind of you know help a, a fish out of water navigate um yeah. but overall just having a having a friend like han i just think would be really nice because if if han cares about you you're going a long way that's uh, yeah that's really all i gotta say I, I was gonna say we didn't mention mention him because i know we were talking about a lot of characters and, and i still think i'm sticking to my choice and you probably will as well but luke is also very similar to that like Luke was gonna be like Luke was like my top in my top yeah. three, I think. Um, yeah, I mean Empire, Empire, and Return of the Jedi is evidence enough, you know, that like he he is also in that same way that Han is very loyal, where he's like he's gonna go yeah. back and get his friends. Except yeah. in the sequel trilogy, uh, you gotta beat him over the head <laughs> to be like, <laughs> help your sister. No. <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, but both Han and Luke kind of struggle with that from time to time, where they just yeah. kind of they they get into a mood. It's um, they're old. They they were old. It's fine, yeah, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I like those choices. Mm -hmm. I, I like questions like that that make you think of just kind of like the, I don't know, the sweeter side of Star Wars. You know, yeah. Um, it's I also just love to think of like the the semblance of having like a, a party in star Wars, like in KOTOR, you know, I mean, star Wars is filled with like, Oh, you've got your, your kind of ensemble of characters. That's a big appeal of star Wars. And, mm -hmm. um, and so being able to have like a companion, you know, and like who that your companion would be. Um, yeah, I was teetering between, um, Han, Chewie and Huang, but Chewie, I think like, again, yeah. very resourceful. He's basically your own personal bodyguard. He can yeah. live, I don't even know how long Wookiees can live, but he can live a long time. Like you're good. Um, and when he has a life debt to you, like again, 
It's a life debt. Literally, it's a life debt, you know? So, um, which I think Han also respects a lot. Like, I think in a weird way, he kind of picks that up from Chewie. But, um, but yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. I love Star Wars. <laughs> I love Star Wars. Cole, where can Over they here. find you? You can find me at the.cosmic.drifter on Instagram and on YouTube. You can find uh, just me at the Cosmic Drifter. You should do it. Link in the description. Do it, please. You can find me at Shrades the Rate, but more importantly, you can find all of this, this whole thing at Mortis FM um, on Instagram, on Spotify, all the platforms wherever you're listening to YouTube. Uh, I think TikTok is Mortis underscore FM. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you go to our Instagram at Mortis FM, follow the link tree there. You'll be good to go. Fantastic. Grayson, is there anything else left? Yeah, I've got one last thing. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta itch my nose here. Oh, may the force be with you. Always. <laughs> <laughs>